Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online service here at Emmanuel Pentecostal Tabernacle, Virgin Arm, and Carter's Cove. We are so delighted that you have joined with us today, and we trust that you will enjoy this service uh, with us this morning. We trust that you will sense and feel God's presence as you worship with us, that he would uh, speak to you in a fresh way, and he would encourage you, uplift you, he would strengthen you in your walk with him. And we also uh, pray that the truth of his word would be brought real into your life and applied to your life and would change and transform you in the areas that may be applicable today. We want to uh, invite you at this time to take a moment uh, to share our service this morning. Uh, there may be individuals connected to your Facebook page that may be having trouble finding this service this morning, or they may be connected to your Facebook page and just randomly uh, stumble upon this service today. And this service, uh, whether it be the worship or the preaching, may be exactly what they need to hear in their life right now. So take a moment and share this service right now, and God will bless you for it. And we're so delighted to have our worship team lead us in worship again today, our worship team here at EPT. And they're going to be leading us in a few moments. Uh, but we're also delighted to be hearing a message today from Pastor Jenna Oxford. And before we head into our service this morning and we enjoy a time of worship and a hearing from God's Word, why don't we open our service in prayer this morning? So let's pray together. Father, I pray that you would just speak to us uh, through this service today, that we would sense your presence in our lives, that you would come and encourage our hearts and uplift us and strengthen us afresh uh, to continue to serve you. I pray your blessing upon the worship team today. I pray your blessing upon every individual that's listening today. And Lord, though they may have many needs in their lives today, I pray, Father, that you would just minister and move in those situations like only you can. can. I pray your strength and anointing upon our speaker today. And may they sense your presence. And Lord, may your word go forth and not return void. And may it do in our hearts and lives what you will for it to do. May our hearts be open to hear and receive from you today is our prayer. And we ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen and amen. God bless you and we hope you enjoy our worship on today.
Good morning. It's so good to be here with you this morning through your screen. And I'm glad to be here this morning to share a message with you I've titled, The Lord Helps Me. I remember as a child there were two shows that I enjoyed watching and always gave my whole family a good laugh. They were Kids Say the Darndest Things and America's Funniest Home Videos. Both were filled with kids saying hilarious and sometimes shocking things that made everyone laugh. The truth is, and I'm sure you all know it, Kids say just what they think and they rarely hold back. But there are many times when kids have some great life lessons that we can all learn from. Their perspective on life has been untainted by their experiences and they have an outlook on life that is always so refreshing. I recently read an article that had some advice given by children that some of you might find useful. First of all, when you want something expensive, ask your grandparents. Secondly, never try to hide a piece of broccoli in a glass of milk. Third, never be too full for dessert. Some of you are agreeing with that one. When your dad asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer him. Forget the cake and go for the icing. And finally, remember the two places you are always welcome, church and grandma's house. I really like that last one. Growing up, I was definitely one of those children who said just what was on my mind, even when it left my parents feeling embarrassed or shocked or whatever. I've been known to say the wrong thing at the wrong time and definitely got a few laughs out of people because of it. Despite that, there were some lessons I learned as a child that still stick out in my mind and are valuable today. 
One thing that sticks out in my mind is a lesson that my dad worked hard to teach me. As a child and a teenager, there's always a certain direction that the crowd tends to walk in. My dad believed that there were much greater things in store for me if I didn't follow the crowd and worked hard to help me see that. I remember every night he would pray for me to have the wisdom to know what's right and the courage to do what's right, even when it's hard. That lesson and prayer has stuck with me all my life. And today as a grown up and now raising my own child, every day I want to be wise and courageous enough to always do the right thing, even when it goes against the grain. It's a childhood lesson that has carried me all this way. That brings me to our scripture this morning. I want to read this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter 71. I'm going to read the whole Psalm today and then we'll look into it further in a few minutes. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, O oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O oh Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you, O oh Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have carried me from birth, from my mother's womb you have carried me. No wonder I am always praising you. My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. For my enemies are whispering against me. They are plotting together to kill me. They say, God has abandoned him. Let's go and get him for no one will help him now. Oh God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. Bring disgrace and destruction on my accusers. Humiliate and shame those who want to harm me. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness all day long. I will proclaim your saving power, though I am not skilled with words. I will praise your mighty deeds, O oh sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. Oh God, you have taught me from earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me, O oh God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, God? You have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. Then I will praise you with music on the heart because you are faithful to your promises, O God. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. I will shout for joy and sing your praises for you have ransomed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long for everyone who has tried to hurt me has been shamed and humiliated. Let's pause for a moment and pray. Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Make your word come alive and challenge us and change us. Help me to speak clearly and let your anointing rest on me as we just hear from your word. Amen. In our text this morning, the psalmist is looking to God for help and he's returning to a life lesson that he has known ever since he was a child. He says in verse five, O oh Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you, O oh Lord, since childhood. Yes, you have been with me from birth, from my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. He is a testimony that many of you may have as well. I know I do. Since the beginning of his life, he has seen the faithfulness of God. God has proved himself to be faithful and is worth placing his trust in. As that song I love says, he has lived in the goodness of God. This believer is faced with a situation where he has enemies all around him. Things are not going as he hoped they would go, and he is looking to God for help. He is an older believer. He has lots of experience under his belt and yet he finds himself overwhelmed with the challenge he's currently facing. I know that many today are feeling exhausted and have lost hope. Most people I talk to seem tired, have nothing to look forward to, have lost their sense of excitement and thrill for life, and seem to be just living from one day to the next. Some of you may be also there today. The pandemic fatigue is real. You may be feeling overwhelmed like you have enemies on every side. I want to remind you today that like the psalmist, you are not on your own. God has been with you since your youth, and he will continue to be with you today. You can live and walk in hope and peace and assurance. Today I want to share with you four truths that apply to all of our lives from Psalm 71 that I believe will be an encouragement to your soul. First of all, Psalm 71 shows us that 
the Lord helps me now. The psalmist begins by stating, Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Can you hear the desperation in his writing? The psalmist is crying out to God and realizes that God is his only hope. He is asking God to protect him, to deliver him, to listen to him, to set him free. He knows that if God doesn't rescue him, he will be disgraced and ashamed, and his enemies will believe that God has abandoned him. He felt the pressure and the weight of all those who were against him, but he didn't want to give in to them. He wanted to stand firm in the face of it all through God's strength. Despite his desperation, he is confident that God will help him. When I read it, I don't hear much questioning of whether God is able to or not, but instead that he will. He simply states what he knows is true about God. He is his rock of safety, his fortress, a safe place to hide, his rescuer and his protector. This morning, I want to remind you what is true about God. The same thing that the psalmist stated are true about God today. He has not changed and he will not change. He is our rock of safety, our fortress, our hiding place, our rescuer and our protector. Whatever you are facing, you can cry out and trust that God will help you. When we find ourselves in desperate need, we can trust that the Lord helps us in our current situation. Secondly, Psalm 71 shows us, the Lord helped me in the past. The psalmist states, O Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you, O Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have been with me from birth, from my mother's womb you have cared for me. No wonder I'm always praising you. My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. Throughout life, there are moments of questioning and doubt. In my own life, there have been moments where I questioned God and I wondered if he really cared or if he was really able to do all I hoped that he could do. Maybe you've had those moments too. And if you haven't, you might have one still. In those moments, it was important for me to have memorial stones in place to remind me of what God had done in the past. You might be wondering what memorial stones are, but it comes from the book of Joshua. God had done an amazing miracle of allowing the Israelites to cross over the Jordan River. God commanded them to set up 12 stones. The reason he made this command is because he was familiar with his people. He knew that they were quick to forget the faithfulness and power of God. So in Joshua 4, Joshua tells the people, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Despite the amazing miracle that had just taken place, God knew that a time would come where people would doubt him, turn away from him, or simply forget about who he was and what he had done. Because of this, he commanded the people to set up stones as a clear reminder that the hand of the Lord is mighty. In our own lives, we may not set up physical stones, but we still need reminders of the faithfulness of God in our lives and the way he has shown up, shown up for us in the past. Maybe that will be a note or a verse posted somewhere in our house. Maybe it will be sharing a testimony with a friend so that they can remind us in our time of need of what God has done. Maybe it will be writing in our journal or in our Bible so that we can look back and remember what God has done. However it looks, whether they're physical reminders or mental reminders, We all need memorial stones to remind us of the way God has moved in our lives in the past, to renew our faith that he will once again move in our lives. As the psalmist is crying out to God in his current time of need, he begins to reflect back and remember the faithfulness of God in the past. He states that God has been with him from birth to old age. He was once young and now he is old, but yet God has been faithful to him through all the stages of his life. So although he found himself in a dark situation where he needed the help of God, he could look back and be reminded that God had helped him in the past and he would certainly help him right now. He didn't have to fear that God would abandon him, but he could look back and know that God was his hope and he could place all his trust in him. He would not be forsaken or ashamed. He would be delivered. 
And because the psalmist knew that God had surely helped him in the past, he could also look ahead to the future and trust that God would help him in the future. Psalm 71 thirdly teaches us that the Lord will help me in the future. It says, but I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. Oh God, you have taught me from earliest childhood and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I'm old and gray, do not abandon me, O oh God. Let me proclaim your power to this next generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. There are some things that we grow to expect about people. For me, most people who know me have grown to expect that I will accept coffee any time it is offered. There is rarely a time when someone asks me if I want a coffee and I say no. And even if I did say no, if they brought me that coffee, I would absolutely still drink it. For many of you, I could expect that if I walked into your house at 6 p.m. any given night, you would be watching the news. We all have things about us that we are pretty faithful in doing that those who know us expect us to be doing. For the psalmist, he had grown to expect that God would be his helper. He says, I will keep on hoping for your help. God had proven to him throughout his entire life that he was faithful and he could trust him. He knew that God was his hope and he could keep on hoping and expecting him to come through for him and he would not be let down. The truth is we can trust that even when life throws disappointments and discouragement our way, even when the help we are longing for seems delayed, God is faithful. He is our help and our hope and we can trust him. Our future is secure. We don't have to worry or fear. We can praise and thank God even in the middle of our trial and discouragement because we know he is faithful to deliver us. He has done it in the past, he is doing it right now, and he will do it in the future. And we can go on and we can proclaim that power to the next generation to tell them that God will be faithful to them just as he was faithful to us and renew hope in their spirits that our God is a God who is faithful that we can place our trust and our hope in. Finally, I want to tell you this morning from Psalm 71 that we need to praise the Lord for his help. The psalmist goes on to end off his psalm saying, Then I will praise you with music on the harp, because you are faithful to your promises, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. I will shout for joy and sing praises, for you have ransomed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long. The psalmist is so confident that his deliverance is on the way that he already states how he's going to praise God for it. He doesn't say he will praise God if he comes through, but it's just a matter of when it will happen. He is already getting his harp and lyre ready for that moment. I love that idea. Oftentimes in the midst of our trials, we are just barely hanging on, hoping that God might show up and change it. I can picture the psalmist though, getting his harp ready, tuning up his voice, getting his songs of praise ready to go, looking back through the Psalms to see what he's gonna sing. I want that to be my posture as I begin this year. Instead of focusing on my current situation, worrying about it, fearing what might happen next, I want to already be picking out my celebration and my victory songs, getting my voice and my instruments ready for when my deliverance comes. The familiar scripture in Psalm 121:1 says, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. May I encourage you this morning, instead of looking down at the battle you are facing, why not lift your eyes to the hills, lift your head towards heaven, and get ready for the victory celebration. Your help is on the way. And when it comes, when God shows up just as he always does, we will be ready to praise. Just like the psalmist, I want to be able to say now while I am young, and continually when I'm old, when I'm gray, when I'm more experienced, that I've trusted you, Lord, from childhood that my life is an example to others because God has been my strength and my protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. Over the past few weeks, there's a song myself and Pastor Jared have been playing on repeat in our house. Maybe you've seen it shared on our Facebook pages. It's called Firm Foundation and the words of it say this, when everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. And it goes on to say, I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. I won't be going under because I'm not held by my own strength. I've built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through every season, so why would he fail now? 
He won't. Friends, that's who our God is. He's the one who's faithful through generations in every season. He gives us joy in chaos, peace in all circumstances. He is the rock we can build our hope upon. He is unshakable. He holds us up. He keeps us from going under. And for me, that's reason to praise him. In every season of life, when things are good or bad or ugly, he is the same. Faithful, good, kind, loving, strong. So I can say praise God for his help now, in the past, and in the future. As I bring this message to a close this morning, I want you to be reminded that whatever your current situation is, you can be assured that God is already working in it. I want to encourage you to begin to praise God in the midst of it, to tell of his faithfulness to you, to reflect on his faithfulness in the past, and to prepare your victory songs. God is our help, an ever-present help in time of trouble, the Bible tells us. And he hasn't failed us in the past, and he won't start now. Be encouraged, the Lord helps me now. The Lord helps me, help me in the past. The Lord will help me in the future. And I will praise him for his help. Maybe this morning you haven't experienced the help that Jesus gives. You, maybe you're in a situation and it all sounds like promising, but you just haven't made that step and made that connection with God. If you want to do that this morning, if you want to start a relationship with God, I'm going to lead you in a prayer and you can repeat after me. And when you do that, you'll have a relationship with God and you can experience that help that he offers firsthand. If you can repeat after me this morning. Dear God, I come to you and I just ask for your forgiveness in my life. I pray you would make me new, bring me into relationship with you, and bring your help to me today. I need you and I want you in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for the rest of you who are watching this morning, I want to pray for you as well, that you would experience God's help in your life and that you would have faith and hope rising up in you, that you would trust that God is coming, he's on the way, and he has the answer for your problem. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we have experienced your faithfulness firsthand. We have seen your faithfulness in the past. We will see it in the future, and we can trust in you. We can keep on hoping for your help because we know who you are. So I pray for each person watching this morning, those who may be in dire situations, those who may be feeling discouraged or just need a fresh touch from you. I pray they would experience your help firsthand. They would experience you drawing close to them and that you would show up for them in a real and a powerful way. I pray you would help them to keep praising you in the midst of their situation, that they would get those victory songs ready for when your help and deliverance shows up. We thank you so much for your word and the way that it speaks to us. And we pray you'll be with us in the days ahead. Amen. The worship team is going to lead us in a song, and I ask that you would just worship along with them as they do. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay in my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. the goodness of God and I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as
Thanks for joining us this week. We're so glad you've been here for our service. We'll be here again next week at 11 a.m. and we'd love for you to join us. I'm just going to pray for you as you go today that God would be with you. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for these moments together. We thank you for the way that you've showed up even in our homes today and that we've experienced you and heard from your word today. We just pray for each person that's watching that you would be with them this week, that they would experience you each day and that they would know you are near to them and you care for them. We just love you and we praise you and we thank you for who you are. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.